in this video we're discussing prediction intervals in order to predict an individual value of y at a particular location of x, right? So to go back to the example we used in the previous video where we talked about confidence intervals to predict the average value of y, let's talk about um, shoe size and women's height, right? So what if I said, you know, I wanted to estimate the, shoe si the height of a particular woman who wears a shoe size of 6. So in other words, I say, well, hey, if a woman has a shoe size of 6, I want to estimate her specific height, right? So not the average height for all women who wear a shoe size of 6, but rather a specific height for a specific woman, right, who wears a shoe size of 6. So the formula has a similar structure to the other one. It's y hat plus or minus the table value, right, the t-table value, and then an estimate of the standard error of prediction, though. So before we had the standard error of y hat, now we have the standard error of prediction. That's what we're basically looking at. Now, that standard error of prediction is expressed here, and it looks very similar to the standard error we had in those confidence interval formulas before, except for you'll notice there's a 1 here in front. So in the other, other formula, we just had two terms under the radical. We had one, plus, 1 over n plus that expression here. Now we have a 1 plus 1 over n plus that expression, right? Of course, you still have the s here. You have t alpha divided by 2 plus or minus y hat and still have n minus 2 degrees of freedom. The important thing, though, is that this extra 1 is going to mean we're going to have a couple of things that are going to be obstacles. Essentially, we're going to have wider intervals, necessarily. Always wider. Because, you know, even if we picked a great xp value, like we picked x bar, x bar minus x bar becomes 0, that disappears, right? That would make that term go to 0. Then 1 over n, you know, if we had a really nice sample size, a large n, that would become pretty small, right? So that term might, you know, get to be small or negligible. But then you would still have this 1. There'd be no way around it. That 1 would still be there, which means you're guaranteed to have at least s, right? So s times the square root of 1 would be s. You're guaranteed to at least have the full amount of s here as part of this error term. And so that means that you're always going to have wider intervals when you're dealing with a prediction interval for an individual. And this should make sense, of course, right? It's going to be far easier to predict the average value for women who wear a shoe size of 6 than it would be to predict for a, speci predict for a specific woman, right? So, you know, we might get an answer when we're done, something like this, right? You know, 59 inches up to, uh, you know, 70 inches or something. So that might be a very wide interval if you wanted to predict, and, and that's pretty common, especially if you don't have a large sample size and your model isn't that great. Um, if you have a really strong model, which means that the um, S here is kind of small, that standard error, or sorry, that um, standard deviation measure is pretty small, at that point, you know, then you might get a smaller, more narrow interval. But in generally speaking, especially if S is, is pretty large and you have a pretty um, small sample size, and you don't pick the predictor value that's close to x bar, you're going to have a pretty wide interval, which virtually at times makes the intervals useless. They're not very helpful. But if you have a good model and you have a, a small standard deviation here, you have a pretty decent sample size, you can get a pretty decent prediction interval, and that would be a prediction interval for an individual, right? And you'd be able to say something like, I'm 95% confident that that individual woman will be somewhere between this tall and this tall, given the fact that she wears a shoe size of 6. So again, the important thing is that it's an estimate for an individual value, right? Not for an average value for people or things that have this trait, right? It's rather an individual who has that trait and you're trying to make a prediction about their value of y. Okay, so that's it. Um, the mechanics of how to do this, of course, will be covered in the problem videos and, you know, that part is just calculations. That's not so difficult. Of course, in the context of those problems will also be the interpretation as well.